All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for uh, participating in this year's Ready Tech Go. Uh, today, I'm gonna be presenting on uh, project-based uh, learning um, and how Lumio by Smart can help you uh, uh, with your projects with your students. All right, uh, at the EdTech and Design Department, uh, we have a vision where every student will engage in their local and global communities and emotionally, uh, uh, emotionally intelligent citizens, creator, creators, and critical thinkers and collaborators. Uh, we also have a mission to empower all students and teachers with quality learning experiences and seamless access to digital and physical resources, fostering student-driven real-world learning. Uh, we also like to, when we do these presentations, um, give the teachers some uh, indication of how this can help you uh, with T-tests and your evaluations. Um, and I chose planning uh, activities. Uh, and in, in, this, uh, in this part of it, it's the teacher plans, engaging flexible lessons that encourage high order thinking, uh, persistence and achievement. And so I think we'll hit on um, a lot of that today with this presentation. Uh, uh, my name is Jeffrey Schauberger. I am an ed tech instructional specialist here in San Antonio ISD. Uh, I have my email there. I will uh, place that in the chat at the end as well. Uh, just a little bit about me. Uh, this is my uh, 12th year in education, my fourth year as a ed tech, uh, either a structural coach or a structural specialist. Uh, I did all my teaching in Houston ISD and I moved to San Antonio where I uh, got my first uh, tech position. So today's objectives, uh, the teachers will be able to create digital activities to support and enhance PBL using Lumio by SMART. And we'll also be uh, looking at promoting the 21st century skills with tools to create, collaborate, and think critically. Uh, all the things that we really want our students to, uh, to get out of our uh, lessons that we teach. Uh, for the agenda, uh, we're going to start off by just doing a little explanation of PBL, uh, project-based learning. Then we're going to look at Lumio and SMART. Uh, and then we're going to go into how Lumio SMART can benefit your projects with your students with planning, student research, assessment, critique. And then I'll have some resources for you at the end uh, to help you uh, get started to implement uh, Lumio and project-based learning. I will say this before we move on. Uh, this is heavily centered around uh, just information. So if you're not familiar with Lumio uh, and you get maybe a little lost, uh, I can recommend uh, a uh, beginner kind of session for you. Uh, but this is really going to uh, hi highlight and showcase different uh, ways that Lumio can help you with project-based learning. So we're going to go a little bit into Lumio, but uh, the nuts and bolts we're not going to really hit today. All right, so PBL explained. Uh, Project-based learning uh, and its essential elements can be transforming with the use of Lumio by SMART. With developing PBL with Lumio, students are able to perform productive research, collect outside information, and collaborate easier and faster with fellow students, teachers, and industry experts. You will find today throughout this presentation that Lumio is very versatile. So it is a great way for you to, uh, to have students work either individually, they could work in small groups or even in like a whole group setting. So it gives you that versatility uh, with your projects. Um, I know that a lot of times uh, we think of project-based learning to be a group activity, but a lot of times you want to see uh, the individual student creates something on their own. So it, it gives you that versatility to have that opportunity to present uh, information to students in different ways. So I always like to uh, kind of give you the, the what and why. So the first video I'm gonna show you here is basically project-based learning, uh, some of the benefits. And then the second video I'm gonna show you is the why, why we need to be using these types of uh, teaching techniques with our students. So I'm gonna show you the first one. Okay, sorry about that, my screen froze. Uh, so one of the things that I like to kind of uh, present to teachers on the why we need to uh, use project-based learning and other uh, 
other types of uh, instructional techniques is in the old school, uh, they basically were learning factories. Everybody was lined up in a row. Uh, nobody was talking. Um, and it was just rogue learning. Uh, presented with information and you had to regurgitate that at the end with the test. But in today's world, in our schools, uh, in the new school, I guess I would call it, is a 21st century learning model where kids are, they have flexible learning spaces that they're able to communicate and collaborate with each other. Uh, they're able to work together to solve real world problems. And that's really what we want our kids to be doing is doing that critical thinking collaboration. So, uh, cause we all know that in uh, the real world when they get out of school, that's the types of skills that are really gonna uh, move them forward. This is one of my favorite quotes by John Dewey. Uh, and it says, we will teach today's students as we taught yesterday's, we rob them of tomorrow. And I think that's very important for us to uh, keep that in mind that we always have to be innovative. We always have to uh, have our kids uh, be learning and growing. And so I think, I think that's very key. And project-based learning is a great way to uh, achieve that with your class. Uh, so a little bit about SMART, uh, Lumio by SMART. Uh, kind of a show of hands or maybe uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Who has had experience with Lumio in their, their class this year or have, have uh, used it before? Do we have any users? Let's see here. Well, it looks like we have some that have and uh, some maybe that may be new to it. But Lumio is a great um, tool uh, for you to use uh, in your classroom to deliver lessons, to have uh, kids interact with you while you're teaching. Uh, again, you can use it as an individual assignment. You can use it as a small group, whole group type activity. So there's so many different ways that you can use Lumio uh, to uh, enhance and deliver a very engaging experience for your students. Uh, but it says here that Lumio is an online lesson delivery platform that allows you to take content you already have uh, already have and transform it with activities, ready-made content, and more. It's engaging for students and can be used anytime, any place. Uh, one of the other benefits for uh, using Lumio with your project-based learning is you can uh, change the setting for like in class type of activities where the teacher, uh, the teacher's controlling the student's progression. And then you also have the opportunity to change it to student uh, pacing. So the student uh, has the opportunity to work on uh, the project either at home or uh, if uh, a group wanted to get together outside of school, they're still able to uh, work together on their their project, which is very, very exciting when you're doing uh, project-based learning, that communication and collaboration piece. So I'm not gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna really like go into uh, Lumio too much, but I do want you to uh, know where you, how you can access it. Uh, and you can, uh, if you're a SISD employee, you can access it through a uh, class link. And a lot of teachers uh, get kind of confused with, uh, with uh, the icon, because it's a little bit different than uh, what you see when you go to Lumio. And it, it's also labeled here as Smart Learning Suite. Uh, but this is where you can find it in, uh, in Classlink. Now, I do want to go over just a couple different things uh, with you. Everything that I'm going to show you today for the project-based learning part uh, was found uh, either by adding an activity or by exploring resources. So some of the uh, different items that, I've, that I'm going to present to you today were uh, added by other educators or created by other uh, educators. And all of that material can be found uh, in your Lumio account under Explored Resources. And then the Add Activities, this is where uh, you could find the pre-made templates that uh, Lumio has created. Uh, and we're going to go over some of those uh, as we move forward uh, in the, uh, this uh, session. So the very first, so to add an activity, once you click on it, this is the page that you're going to see. 
And we're gonna really be focusing on uh, just a few of these different, uh, uh, these different sections here we have, uh, we are gonna look at the graphic organizer, manipulatives, uh, questions and reflection, uh, activating prior knowledge. And then we're also gonna take a look at um, the game-based activities and uh, some of the uh, instant responses that you can uh, provide your students as they are working with their project. And then right over here is a picture of what it looks like if you were to explore resources that have been uploaded by other teachers uh, and educators. Uh, and so I just wanted to show you that uh, there's a search here. You can search by grade level, by subject, and it gives you a lot of good resources that you can use uh, within your class. So the first, uh, the first group that we're gonna look at, our first topic is gonna be the planning and organization. Uh, and planning the project is really, uh, in, in most cases, is gonna be more up to the teacher. So this is really gonna be a teacher-focused uh, area where uh, Lumio gives you the opportunity to do a lot of your uh, pre-planning for your uh, project-based learning activities. Uh, it allows you to develop interactive digital files for endless project management tools, uh, stay organized with uh, the Google Drive integration. And some of the things that you could do to help uh, organize and plan is uh, creating group, uh, the project groups, uh, divvying out the group roles, and also uh, calendar and timelines for your students to follow as they're moving through their project. So some other uh, planning materials we're going to look at is a calendar, uh, task uh, tracker, project overview, group jobs, project groups, and weekly planner. And like I said, everything that I'm going to show you, uh, I received or I got either uh, from the uh, created activity or also by searching in the uh, resources uh, section of Bloomio. So this right here is just an example of project overview. And whenever you create and you put this into Lumio, it gives you the opportunity for either you to provide the information for your students. Uh, this might be a way for you to, once uh, the groups have, uh, you've already put your students in groups, maybe for them to work on some of this information uh, as uh, a group. So like I said, you can either have it ready for them or you can even have them create it with you or with their groups um, as part of the, the learning process. Uh, but this gives you an opportunity for your, your project title, some driving questions that you may have, uh, maybe the grade level or subject that they're gonna be looking at, uh, the time frame for the project, uh, maybe a project summary and the products that the students will be using uh, throughout um, the, the project time. It is also uh, good to create a calendar. Uh, so it gives, uh, this is a template that I got from Lumio. Um, and it has a section here to put everything that needs to be done, maybe some notes that the students can keep about their progress. And then of course, a calendar that you can create for uh, the individual uh, project that uh, you're presenting. Uh, this one right here is for uh, you to create groups. And again, like I said, you could have either the information already prepared for your students, or you could send this out on Lumio and maybe have the students create this own. So they could create their group member or put their group members' names and what job that they have elected that uh, member of their group to do. And then it gives them opportunities for notes. Uh, in Lumio, one of the uh, features that I really uh, like, especially with project-based learning, is it gives you the opportunity to group your students uh, and whenever you are sending this out to the students, you can send it out specifically to certain group members. So uh, one, it helps you keep organized with your groups, but it also gives uh, the group members a place that they can uh, work and collaborate uh, without the other uh, group members being a part of that particular activity. All right, so this uh, is a task uh, tracker. So uh, again, you can uh, send this out to your uh, either individual or group members. 
and they can uh, complete this and fill in information about the tasks that they're uh, going to complete, the group member that is going to uh, be in charge of that, and then a weekly timeline here where they can keep themselves organized. Um, and uh, so everybody kind of knows um, what uh, direction they need to go, what tasks that they have uh, to complete uh, in a timeline fashion. Uh, and again, this is something that your students, you can send it out to the groups and have the students complete it. And then they always have access to it if you put it on student mode uh, in Lumio. And so they can keep track. So they can put check marks or uh, maybe move uh, a deadline so they can really uh, take ownership of their project in its progression. And then also one for your groups. So uh, you can uh, have your all of your groups and the group members, uh, the good way to keep yourself organized as a teacher and also presenting uh, the groups to your students so they know exactly who they're gonna be working with. Uh, again, this is al always gonna be a live document as well, where you can, if you need to go in, uh, in the middle of a project, maybe change uh, up some groups, or uh, we always have, you know, new students coming in, students coming out, and this is a, a good way for you to have that live document where you can update it and change it um, and share it with your students as well. And the last one here for the planning is the weekly planner. And again, it's just a, uh, a good way to keep yourself organized and send this out to uh, your groups to have them fill out to let uh, the teacher know exactly what they're going to be working on, uh, creating different timelines, and uh, so they can keep track of uh, the progress of their their uh, project. So the next uh, section that we're going to look into is the student research, which it if you've done project based learning before, you know that this is the kind of the bulk of the work that the students will do within the project. Uh, this is where uh, they're going to uh, be discovering and uh, researching the topic uh, that they're being given. And Lubio has a lot of different pre-made uh, resources and different ways for you to create uh, and bring those, uh, any existing materials that you have um, into the student research process. Again, some of the things we're gonna look at uh, in Lumio are the ready-made resources. Uh, we have the, uh, the uh, Activate Prior Knowledge, which is great to use at the very beginning of a project to get uh, the students thinking about uh, things that they've already heard or know about that particular topic. Uh, question and reflection is great for kind of the end, end of a project. So you can have students uh, reflect on their, uh, their participation and, and and how they feel they've done on the project. Uh, you also could do some peer review and even uh, teacher-led uh, review on that as well. Uh, manipulatives, there's a few that uh, work great with projects. We'll take a look at those. And then also, of course, graphic organizers are always a good way for students to keep organized and keep all of the research material uh, in a, a nice, easy fashion for them to uh, go back uh, when they need to. So a couple of the ones that uh, I'm going to mention here are pretty standard graphic organizers. All of these templates you could find uh, in Lumio, they're already pre-made. Uh, you have the Venn diagram, uh, Frayer, and also the uh, tree chart. So those are some good ways for you to uh, have your students work through uh, research and, uh, and learning about different topics. Uh, I'm also going to show you a couple more. Uh, so this is a template that uh, is in Lumio. It's Cornell Notes. So if you're doing a project where they have uh, to do some reading or lecturing, and uh, this is a great way for students to uh, do some notes and capture information that they can use uh, later in the project. And again, the beauty of Lumio is you can have this as an individual uh, worksheet for the students to work uh, independently. Or again, you can have it set up for small groups, or uh, there might even be an opportunity if you're doing like a big Cadillac project where the whole class is participating, you can have this as a whole uh, group activity as well. 
so uh, they can collaborate together. This is just six block. Again, a good way for you, uh, kids to organize information for about their project. Uh, and again, this is a great way for you to send us out to the group and have them uh, work, work on it. And also uh, they can add as they go. So it's a live document again where they can, they can keep adding as they are finding more information about their particular topic. And then content mapping as well. So this is a great, great way too, to have your students really look at a, a topic and kind of plan how they're going to uh, present it or uh, what steps they need to take to complete their project successfully. All right, so uh, this next section is uh, assessment and critique. Uh, in project-based learning, it's very important that you give students feedback, that there's always the time for them to reflect and also uh, revise their work. Uh, the first time a student completes a project, it's probably not gonna be the end of it. Uh, with peer evaluations and teacher evaluations, you always wanna give them that opportunity to get that feedback and then uh, critique uh, their work and then provide them the opportunity to uh, elevate their work uh, with that information. So in Lumio, uh, they already have a, some really good activities that you can uh, instantly provide to your kids uh, in groups as they're moving through their project. Uh, they have uh, plus minus and interested where students have to examine a topic by looking uh, at the pluses, minuses, and interesting aspects of a topic. So this is a good way for you to get your students uh, to start thinking about uh, their research project. Um, and, or a lot of times I like to use this whenever you are um, presenting like a real world, a real world pro problem that they have to come up with the solution as their project. Uh, so this is a good way for them to keep um, their ideas. What's the plus and the minuses of the, of the ideal being offered? Uh, and then what is interesting aspect of the topic. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the other one that I wanted to show you is three facts, two questions and one opinion. This is really good too to use in the group setting uh, for uh, groups to kind of keep their uh, research organized, being able to uh, <coughs> Collaborate, excuse me again, I'm sorry. Uh, to ask questions and also offer opinions about some things that uh, they have researched and found. And then also like this too, the response activities. Uh, do you, you agree or disagree? So you can have, uh, as a, a group is moving forward in their project, um, if there's some disputes, you can also use this as a way to keep them uh, so they can organize and, and uh, with their project as they move forward. And then also, how do you feel about the topic? So uh, this is a good way too to get your students thinking about how to, uh, how their topic uh, is going, what they feel about the topic, uh, different aspects of their project and how it's going. So it's a good way to reflect um, what the, the the students are doing within their group and their project. Uh, and the last uh, section here is the assessment part. So this is where you can offer quizzes and gamification for your students in the project. Uh, in responses, uh, you have the opportunity to create different uh, quizzes and content, and they have different uh, choices that you can, uh, or question choices that you can provide to your students, like multiple choice, true, false, multiple answer, polls, and opinions and then short answer as well. Uh, this is also a, a good way to uh, help your students with, uh, with this new star format and things like that. So some of these questions are the types of questions that they are, are kind of moving towards. So it's a good way to get your students uh, used to those as well. And then with the game-based activities, um, there's a lot of different uh, ways that you can add that gamification for your students as well. Uh, 
as a way to assess their learning? Uh, are they picking up the different concepts that you are uh, uh, trying to convey to them through the project? Making sure they're uh, hitting those targets uh, with the content uh, as you're moving forward as well. Uh, some of the uh, resources uh, I have on here, there is a couple that I want to, uh, to kind of show you real quick. Uh, the first one is the getting started. So if you are uh, new to Lumio and uh, you just want to get some basic information of how to get started, I added this here. And if you click on it, it's going to take you to the smart website where uh, it gives you a lot of good information about uh, Lumio and smart. Uh, right here, you have uh, the getting started, the teacher guide, the Lumio uh, toolkit, which is very helpful, classroom resources, and then also their YouTube channel. So you can uh, look at some of their videos that they have uh, to help you uh, navigate the program and software and get your students uh, connected uh, and, and ready to go. They also have information about the smart board and how that interactive uh, display uh, works with Lumio. Uh, and if uh, your campus has uh, smart boards or uh, other interactive displays, then uh, Lumio will, uh, will work with them and it, it, it really enhances the, uh, the student's uh, experience as, uh, as you're working uh, with the projects. Uh, and again, they have the Get Started Guide to how uh, it works with the board, your uh, IQ tool kit, and then also some training modules and uh, some other activities for you to uh, look at as well, materials. So this would be a great resource, again, if you are uh, new to Lumio. It also goes over the ready to use resources for Lumio. Uh, and again, this is stuff that uh, the smart company has created and also uh, other educators have uploaded uh, into this uh, resource uh, center for you to research and look and find things that you can find useful for your class. And it also has some instructional integration uh, information, uh, things like active learning strategies, social emotional toolkit. Uh, it also has a section here for English language learners, uh, which uh, can be very helpful, and then also game-based learning. So this is too is a good research on uh, resource on how you can use some of these activities in your classroom uh, and for also projects. Um, and then also uh, integration with other uh, softwares like Google, Microsoft, Seesaw, and more. So there's some information there as well. And then uh, they have some Lumio resources for the classroom. Uh, I want to go back here and uh, look at the Lumio Teacher Toolkit, because this has a wealth of information and different lesson examples uh, for these uh, specific topics. So you have game-based learning, you have uh, English language learner, social emotional learning. So you have all these different professional development, AVID uh, activities. And so it gives you a lot of different uh, examples of lessons and things that you can pull and use in your class uh, to get started. All right, so that really uh, completes uh, the information that I have for you today. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, I'd be more than happy to, to try to answer those for you uh, about uh, Lumio or how to use it for your project-based learning.